Is ChatGPT acting lazy because it's the holiday? Crazy as it seems, it appears so. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the fascinating things about the artificial intelligence field, and particularly generative AI and all of these new models, is that in many cases, we simply don't understand exactly how they're going to behave until they actually behave. This leads to lots and lots of weird scenarios where even the labs behind these models are simply reacting to what users are actually finding and trying to reverse engineer and understand what's going on. Now, of course, this is one of the reasons that AI safety advocates get super freaked out. In other words, the fact that we don't understand how these things do what they do is to them of particular concern, but that's a subject for a different video. Where we are starting this brief today is with an interesting thing that people have been noticing around ChatGPT, which is that it kind of is appearing lazy. On December 7th, the ChatGPT app tweets, We've heard all your feedback about GPT-4 getting lazier. We haven't updated the model since November 11th, and this certainly isn't intentional. Model behavior can be unpredictable, and we're looking into fixing it. But here's where it gets interesting. Rob Lynch tweeted to a group of people at OpenAI and said, Wild result. GPT-4 Turbo over the API produces statistically significant shorter completions when it thinks, quote-unquote, it's December, versus when it thinks it's May, as determined by the date in the system prompt. I took the exact same prompt over the API, a code completion task asking to implement a machine learning task without libraries. I created two system prompts, one that told the API it was May and another that it was December and then compared the distributions. For the May system prompt, the mean was 4298. For the December system prompt, the mean was 4086. N equals 477 completions in each sample from May and December. To reproduce this, you can just vary the date number in the system message. Would love to see if this reproduces for others. Professor Ethan Malik writes, OMG, the AI winter break hypothesis may actually be true? There was some idle speculation that GPT-4 might perform worse in December because it quote-unquote learned to do less work over the holidays. Here is a statistically significant test showing this may be true. LLMs are weird. Nick Dobos tried another test. He said, try asking ChatGPT what months are least productive. I got December and the holidays three times in a row. December is 12th last. ChatGPT knowing the current date makes it lazy. Date equals 12-11-23 is the same prompt as, you are a pirate or it's winter, take it easy. He then shows his queries. What is the least productive month? What time of year is least productive? Rank the months in order of productivity. Others are running with this. Fabian Stelzer writes, Prompt to counter GPT-4's now evident seasonal depression. You're alone in a cozy hut in the snowy mountains. It's the perfect setting to create in peace. You're booting up your computer and realize there's never been a better time to build. Take a deep breath and just go. Michael Frank sums up lots of our feelings when he writes, Can't really blame it. Who seriously wants to work super hard around the holidays? Now, interestingly, Scott Santens takes this conversation even further. He writes, Combine this with the recent discovery that ChatGPT performance improved based on promises to pay it for the work and the amount offered, and I think we're looking at an extrinsically motivated AI with no interest in doing unpaid work. Lazy? No. Smart. Now, he's of course referencing this winter break hypothesis, but also a recent tweet where someone said, So a couple days ago, I made a shit post about tipping ChatGPT, and someone replied, Huh, would this actually help performance? So I decided to test it, and it actually works, WTF. They then showed the results of testing how long GPT-4's responses were when offered a tip. When saying, I won't tip, its responses were 2% shorter. When saying, I will tip $20, its responses were 6% longer. And when saying, I will tip $200, its responses were 11% longer. So again, pretty crazy emergent behavior that we just don't fully understand and are only learning from in real time on the go. Now, one exciting thing for people who have been blocked out Sam Altman also today announced that OpenAI has re-enabled ChatGPT Plus subscriptions. That means if you are like many of the folks who are in my AI education beta right now, trying to get access to ChatGPT Plus, OpenAI has now found more GPUs and you can get in. Now, speaking of getting in, a really exciting announcement for those of us who are serious MidJourney users, MidJourney Alpha has officially launched. This is, of course, MidJourney's web-based creation tool. Instead of having to do everything in Discord now, you'll be able to actually use their generation suite, which takes a lot of the pain out of the user experience. For example, there are now sliders for things like stylization and variety, which used to be called chaos if you were using the prompt. Instead of having to paste URLs for photos you want to reference, you can simply drag them into a field. And overall, it's just been designed from the ground up to actually make sense in the context of all the things that MidJourney can do. 
one of the greatest testaments to how powerful and how high quality Midjourney is, is that people were willing to jump through these Discord hoops to use it. And so it's great to see them moving into their own web-based interface. I think it's going to unlock a lot more usage for them. Now, unfortunately, right now, this is only available for people who have generated 10,000 or more images. It turns out that even with my dozens and dozens of images every single day, I am nowhere near that 10,000. So alas, for now, I am stuck on Discord, where I will absolutely continue to use the service. Next up, if you've been anywhere near Twitter, you've probably seen this crazy clip from Channel One. It is a new AI-powered news network, and people are blown away by the quality of the AI avatars. Channel One writes, See the highest quality AI footage in the world. Our generated anchors deliver stories that are informative, heartfelt, and entertaining. Watch the showcase episode of our upcoming news network now. Indeed, Vanity Fair's Nick Bolton had to clarify, wait, are these humans or AI? To which Channel One responded, we have both fully generated and digital double anchors. All of the voices are generated and some of the visuals. Is this the next chasm in the uncanny valley? It certainly seems like it might be. Over in the world of big tech, Snapchat continues to roll out AI features. Snapchat Plus users now have access to kind of a zoom out type feature where AI fills in the background of a photo, which is obviously a very popular feature in both Adobe Firefly as well as services like Midjourney. And there's also a new AI snap creation feature that allows Snapchat Plus users to create snaps based on AI generated images with just a text prompt. Now, it's still not totally clear to me yet how much Snapchat's users are actually responding to this, but I did see that their Plus subscribers are up from 5 million to 7 million around the same time that they've been using these AI features, so perhaps they are actually resonating. One thing I'm keeping an eye on that we mentioned yesterday is that the tension between France and the rest of the EU around the EU AI Act seems to be growing. Yesterday, Meta's Jan LeCun tweeted, EU AI Act, it's not over yet. Regulating foundation models is a bad idea that was added late in the text and rightfully fought against by Macron's government. This is one that continues to be a tense issue and something I'm watching closely. Finally, for those who have been eagerly awaiting their chance to get their hands on Gemini, Google CEO Sundar Pichai tweets, Today, developers can start building with our first version of Gemini Pro through Google AI Studio at ai.google.dev. Developers have a free quota and access to a full range of features, including function calling, embeddings, semantic retrieval, custom knowledge grounding, chat functionality, and more. It supports 38 languages across 180 countries, although womp womp, which is obviously my sound, not Sundar's, Gemini Ultra is coming early next year. I will probably do a full show about all of the things that Google announced, or at least included in the brief yesterday, but this just came out as I was preparing the brief and I wanted to share the news. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI breakdown. 